Welcome to Day Z. Today I'm gonna answer a question I get a lot, and that is how me and other content creators get cinematic shots for our videos. I believe these shots can add an incredible layer of viewer immersion and depth. So hopefully through this I provide some clarity and who knows, maybe even inspire one of you to mess around with these tools and build a story of your own. Enjoy. Shots like this one here are recorded on a private server, which I then put admin controls on and give myself those privileges and use the admin controls to capture these scenes. The admin controls in Daisy are quite extensive. And here we have our buddy Danny, who is acting out a scene as I vocalize to him. Walk towards him. Yeah, perfect. Aim and shoot the other one. If the zombie comes, I want you to fight it with your hands. Um, okay, Danny, come uh, over here and say hi to the people. Hello. No, like verbally say hi. Hello. There you go. <laughs> That's Danny. He's helping with the shots. So this is how all this is done. Um, one second, let me... Rain, go away. All right, that's better. As I was saying, this is how it's done. I get onto a private server and I get cinematic shots on the server with another actor. And you may be asking yourself, well, that doesn't explain how the camera flies around. Well, I just have to press this button right here. Boop. Insert. And now it looks like I am looking at myself. I could scroll wheel up and down to make it go slower or faster. I could also hold control and mouse wheel. And I could get cool shots like this. Kind of like the Z the Jaws shot, right? So to speak, I learned that recently. Not a big deal. Right? Alongside this, we also have a bunch of options inside of this admin rule set thing over here. Community online tools. So there are multiple admin modes. And the one that I like is COT. I think it's the best. It's by Jacob, who's one of the devs now. And a couple of the people, Arkansas, I believe, helps with it as well. But as you can see, there's a bunch of different things. Camera tools, so I can adjust the camera. I can make it like very blurry when I go to the camera. I can make it like focus closer, focus further away. I could turn on hacking mode so I could see items in the area. If I wanted to see any of these items, I could just click it. So if I click clothing, for example, and I click auto refresh, boom, I could see all the clothing now. And I don't want that though. I want to get rid of that. So let's boop, get away. Um, also, the main thing that I use when we're talking about adding to a scene. So let's say I just had a run and in my run I came across a bad guy in this house right here while I was looting and they shot me from outside well, well I, what I would do is I would go to my video and I'd be like okay well I was actually wearing a green bomber jacket at this moment I would go to the object spawner I would go to clothing I would type in bomber jacket and I would go green bomber jacket so there we go all live sorry excuse me so as you can imagine kind of equipping your character to have the exact same outfit that you had during the actual oh my god during the actual gameplay it's quite time consuming right i have to have my editing software open on one part of my screen and i gotta have this open on the other part of my screen and i have to sort of navigate that as i go through my journey checking it off also with my opponent right sometimes i if i was roaming through this town and let's say i got shot at from this hillside sometimes i will act as though one of my community members that i'll reach out on the discord I'll be like hey can anyone help and danny who we who we just saw earlier i'll dress him up like the bad guy here and i'll have a cinematic scene that i built here i can add a bunch of different items like beyond clothing i can add literally anything into this they're there is like books, there is petrol, there's, I could spawn a helicopter, I could spawn all of these items, all these clothing items, I could spawn anything that's in the game essentially, anywhere I want. So I'll build the scene and then correlate that. And then as we saw earlier with Danny, I'll just have him repeat the scene over and over again. Sometimes when he's 
doing this scene, there'll be a little desync. There'll be like a hiccup in the server and I'll be like, yo, Danny, actually, can you go back to that door, open it and try again? And then I'll just have Danny much to his dismay, probably check it again. I'm like, oh, when you open that door, you actually collided with the door. Go back, do it again. And then it'll come up and then, oh, when you open the door, I want you to walk through. Actually, I want you to go through slow and I'll just have him repeat it until I get the shot exactly how I want as many times as I can. So this is, I would say 80% of the, the content that you see when you're watching my videos, particularly my videos, I can't speak to others, but when you're watching my videos and you're like, wow, that shot was so cool. He got a shot of him walking like into the distance, like, but how did he do that? Well, this is how I did it. I did it on a custom server that I pay for. This one's actually given to me by legendary server hosting, Dave and Jack and all the homies over there. Um, but we go onto a server that we have admin access on, which is quite difficult to get. Honestly, it's a, a lot to set up the server. That's why I just talked to Jack and Dave and they set it up for me. But after they set up the server and you get admin tools, you can just use the admin tools. I'm not going to go into the controls of the admin tools too much because every different admin like mod is going to have different tools and they're going to interact differently. So I don't want to really go into that too much. But essentially, I'm in a custom server. I could change the weather. I could change the time. I, it's like, oh, well, it was actually really rainy when I, when I was doing that. Oh, that's too much rain. I got to fix that. So then I will go in here and I'll go to storm amount. And I'll go to rain threshold and I'll go to rain maximum and I'll click apply. And I'm like, okay, the rain's going to slowly creep in now. We got a heavy fog. It's a very cinematic scene. And maybe even I will be the person acting out the scene sometimes. Like walking through, replicating the scene, just so I could get cinematic shots to build the story. It's not that I'm scripting content, which a lot of people are accusing people of, and I totally understand because there are a lot of people that are making, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but there are some people that are making content for Daisy that their intent is just to sell a story. And there's nothing wrong with that so long as you are not representing it as authentic content. All of my content is live it happens in the server and then i replicate that on the private servers in order to accomplish a sort of cinematic touch to it that makes it feel like a story or a movie for you guys All right so that that is the number one way admin tools on a private server now i'm going to show you the other way now let's say you had zero friends and you didn't have a private server but you just started making Daisy videos and you feel really good about it, but you want something more. You want like an extra touch. You want a little bit more flair. Well, something you could do is you could go to the steam workshop. And if you do it from the Daisy launcher, just like I did in the mods, oh, whoops, in the mod section, you just click steam workshop and it will take you to this and it'll take you straight to the Daisy workshop. What you're going to type in here is editor. And you're going to subscribe to this right here, the Daisy editor. There's also the Daisy editor loader and the Daisy editor itself is going to require that you subscribe to some other mods, but you don't have to worry about that. Just subscribe to this mod right here. Okay. And after we subscribe to mod, we're going to go into our mods and we're going to scroll down and this is going to be different than joining any server ever. We're just going to click Daisy editor. We're going to click the box and then it's going to say loading dependencies. These mods are required dependencies for the mods you have chosen. So all of these are required in order for me to even have Daisy Meta editor. So I'm going to load select the mods. And as you see, it's going to load all of them. And I'm going to click play. I'm not going to join the server. I'm just going to click play. All right. So this is the home screen for the Daisy editor and the Daisy editor is a lot. There are a lot of different things you can do with the Daisy editor. But what I'm going to talk about today is strictly getting cinematic shots. So we're going to go into open editor. We're going to click whatever map we want. If we want a different map, we just have to load that in the mod set. And we're going to click select. All right. So here we are in the Daisy editor and you could use W A S and D to fly around. You could also use shift to go a little bit faster. And when you get in here, you may notice that it's moving too slow or too fast or anything like that. There are ways that we can adjust that. But first thing we got to talk about are some of the basic controls. So Middle mouse is going to teleport you so you can get to where you want to go. You could also press M. It'll bring up a map and you could use middle mouse. Like if I wanted to go to, for example, Northwest Airfield. Well, this is Northwest Airfield. Boom, I'm middle mouse. Now when I press M again, I'm at Northwest Airfield, okay? Now this cursor here on your screen, you're going to press space bar and that's going to remove the cursor and that's going to allow you to look around. If you press space bar again, I have a cursor. I can't look around. 
I can move like this, but I can't move the actual screen. I can't aim it, right? All right, so those are some of the basic controls with that error. I'm not going to get too much into that detail because you guys are going to practice with it and figure it out. But that's all you really need to know. Z goes down as well and Q goes up. Now, let's say you were at this airfield. And first off, you could just get cinematic shots like this just flying through. But as you see, like some of the buildings in the distance aren't showing in. And that's not really immersive. So what you can do is come up here to the editor portion, go into preferences and click general. Oh my goodness, please don't do this to me. All right, and once we click general, we have view distance and object view distance here. And we're just gonna raise that. That's gonna let everything be seen. Be aware though, the higher you put this, the more strain is gonna be on your computer. So I recommend like keeping it as low as you can for the scene you have. And what you do is you level out the object view distance and the view distance. So they're pretty close to each other. That way things pop together in the distance. And see how it looks way better already? Just in the distance, the fog isn't conquering everything. All right, now let's go back into the editor again, and we're gonna go to camera. This is where we could change the speed of our camera. So if I wanted to really zoom across this, right, I could change the speed to all the way up. Or if I wanted to get a very slow, like crawling shot, I could put this all the way down to like 2.5, get really close in here and get a shot across like this military area right here. Boom. I have a shot like I approached Northwest Airfield, not knowing what was around the corner. Dun, dun, dun. Right. You could do it like that. Um, alongside this, we have environment here where you could change the weather. You can make it rain. You can make it foggy. You can make it overcast. You can make it none of those. You could change the day. You could change the time of year. So this will change the overall sky color as the sun sets and as the sky or as the sun's in the raising and setting. But look at you could see I'm changing the date. It's the exact same time of every day. But look at the sun is setting in a different spot. So something a lot of Daisy players don't know is that servers actually have a day selected of the year. So like servers are on a certain time and that affects things in the game. But we okay so we have all that stuff we got all the all the settings really the last thing i'm going to talk about is the camera here and i'll go more into detail in that in just a second but this next part is what where it gets complicated and i will also say this next part is where it will crash a lot so let's say you had a character and you were trying to actually film yourself at this area of northwest airfield you could type survivor in here Click a survivor from the list and spawn the survivor. But as you can see, they're invisible. I can't see them. So what I got to do is I got to right click on it and I got to go to the control player. So now I am the survivor. I'm actually in the game. I could, if I wanted to get a cinematic shot of me walking through here with my gun in my hands looking menacing, I could do that. Now let's say I wanted to have like actual loot on my character. Um, when you're in the, the character mode, so I'm in control of this character, in order to get out of this character mode, you're gonna click home. That's gonna put you back in the editor camera. And we're gonna talk more about that in just a second. But let's say you wanted this, get this guy with a sick equip, right? I could type in plate carrier here. Now, there is a prop for everything, and then there's an actual thing. So this prop, I could put this on the ground, and this will not be something that my character can pick up. I won't be able to pick this one up. But if I get another plate carrier, a real plate carrier, like this one over here, notice how it doesn't say prop, I can put that one way over here, okay? Now I'll just go back to my person by pressing home. And look at, I can't pick this one up. It's not in the proximity, I can't click F on it. And this one, because it's not a prop, I can actually equip it to my person. So imagine I got myself equipped in a bunch of military clothes and Ah, uh, here, I'll give myself a gun, too. I got a Mosin as well. A classic. Boom. Let's say I got a Mosin. Okay, looking good. I'm walking through here. What I can do is I can press the home key. And this is kind of difficult to manage, but you can do this. When I press the home key or the Y key, it'll freeze my person. But home is much better to use. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I wanted... A shot of my guy aiming down sight right here. I would press home right there. And see, my character is now frozen in that position. And let's say you have the camera really low crawl. If I press Y, I can get rid of all the HUD on my screen. And then I could get a shot of him waiting there. 
right? And this is where I'll talk more about the camera. So let's go into view and camera here. We could change a bunch of things and we could get some really cool shots. Uh, mainly changing the field of view is really cool. We could also do depth of field distance. So things that are really close are not going to be blurred. And watch this. I'm going to blur the background. Wait, let me get it right here. I think I'm a little too close. Boom. So I could get it to where everything else is blurred out except for him. Right. Okay. So this is cool for like mainly for screenshots, right? This isn't like the coolest thing for a scene. So let's say you wanted to get an actual moving shot of this. Well, what you're going to do first off, let me click these in. So they're a little bit smaller. You're going to go down here on the bottom to this tiny little camera and you're going to click that. Now this is a cinematic camera. So you're going to add nodes and what nodes are, if we go down here, add node. We click this little camera again. It's going to break down the menu. When we add a node, essentially I'm saying, I want this moment right here to be the first spot on a track. Okay. Imagine your camera is physically on a track. All right. This is going to be my first checkpoint on the track. And my second one is going to be right here. So I'm going to add a second node and I'm going to put it set from current. So I'm setting this location. If I click fly to, it's going to put me back on the first one. Sorry, I didn't really tell you guys. I click set from current here. And if I click fly to on the second one, it's going to take me over there. Now I'm going to add another node. Maybe I want it to come over here a little bit and I set from current again. And then I get another node where I fly way up here. Add node. So now I have four nodes set from current. Now I'm just going to click run really quick and it's going to go from node one to node two to node three to node four. Check it out. And right after I click run, I'm going to press Y to get rid of all the HUD, right? So I don't have the HUD. Boom. Okay, so it seems like this last place I flew to is a little bit bugged. So let's try a different location and see if it doesn't bug out again. Perfect. Okay, but it doesn't, it feels like a very like stark change that angle that it picked, right? So let's try and keep it a, on the same angle and see if it feels a little more fluid here. Ooh, okay, that's really nice. But what if I flew to this one and I came a little bit out at a different direction here and I set from current right there, getting the getting the tent in the shot too, set from current right there. Let's see what that looks like. So what you do is you just play with the nodes and you play with the angles, you play with the shots and you align that shot exactly how you want it. Sometimes what I find is less is more. Oh, I crashed it. Sometimes what I find is less is more. So adding more nodes sometimes gets a little, gets a little sticky, right? Never thought you'd see that, huh? Never thought that was real. So you could do all kinds of cool things with this Daisy editor. Um, this is where I do a lot of like my map edits when I'll run a custom server and like customize the map a little bit. Uh, but I think that's pretty much it. But I'm just going to go over the controls one more time because I imagine you guys watching are going to want it all in one place. So W, A, S, and D is going to move me. Shift is going to make me move faster. Q is going to make me go up. Z is going to make me go down. So that's just basic controls there. Y is going to remove the HUD and bring the HUD up. Space bar, when the HUD is up, is going to enable my cursor. Space bar is going to disable the cursor. Space bar is going to enable the cursor. Space bar is going to disable the cursor. If I want to, to teleport somewhere, I click middle mouse. If I want to take control of my character, I press home and then it will give me a character even if I don't have one. And once I have the character, like he's character right here, I could press T and teleport my character anywhere. Once you have spawned things in, you could click on it over here on the side and right click to do properties or take control of. And if you want to spawn a survivor, press survivor up here and you have your list. That's pretty much it. I hope this helps someone. I hope this inspires you guys to create some content and hopefully get some cool cinematic shots. You could make a full story out of images. So even if your computer is not that strong, you could just take images, honestly, or small moments and move them. Uh, the one last thing I will say is that the lower your, whoops, the lower your view distances are, the better it's going to run. So if you have a scene just inside the shed, don't have your view distance to 
12,000 because you're only seeing stuff inside the ship, right? So try and minimize your view distance. That's it, guys. I care about you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this inspires someone and I hope this brings some clarity to my videos. All the best. Bye-bye. Oh, sorry. Be good to each other. Or don't.